What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be showing you the perfect workout structure for ultimate long-term success and the best results possible. Let's jump right into it. Let's go, one more, one more. Let's go. The first step of a perfect workout routine ultimately is actually just getting your mindset ready before the gym. Now I'm not saying that you always have to be super motivated, you always have to be super fired up, but you will get better results, especially if you're doing some heavy strength training, if you can mentally prepare beforehand. So what I like to do on the drive to the gym is about 15 to 20 minutes listening to uh, some type of like music that just kind of fires me up, usually it's rap, and then a bit of a motivational video either beforehand, like you saw right over there, um, or, uh, or before I even drive over to the gym. So a lot of times where people go wrong is they kind of just walk into the gym just like this, really no purpose, they'll do a couple light curls, but truthfully, to get the best results possible, you have to really train your mind before you train your body before going into the gym. Right after we get our mind mentally prepared, one of the best things you can do is just do a couple minute warm up. It doesn't have to be super long. You know, if you're doing legs, you can do the treadmill walk, some stair step, or if you're doing upper body, maybe a bit of rowing. You know, there's so many different things, but especially, I know a lot of people like working out as soon as they wake up and your body's just not warmed up enough, so being able to do something like walking, slow jogging, a little bit of movement really does go a long way. Next up is doing dynamic warm-ups specific to what you're doing. So for me, I have bench and deadlifts coming up. Those are my core compounds. So I'm gonna try and do things that really activate my spine, my chest, my rear delts, really get things moving. So I like to start with a light band, you know, do some pull-aparts, big fan of these. You know, I'll bang about 10 or 15 of those. I like to hit some underhands, you know. It's gonna be different for everyone too. Like, Let's say I have a really bad shoulder, a really tense shoulder, you know, maybe I'll do some external band rotations, really give it a little extra TLC. Or if your back isn't the best, you know, spend some more time. As you can see Kyle doing here, these are some great movements for the back. And then here's some of our favorites for the hips. There's so many great things to do. If you want a really good mobility protocol, we have a full video on like our absolute one. It's really long, but you can pick and choose what you like and implement it accordingly. One of the most important things after the warm up is actually to focus on adding in primers. So there's a difference between primers and mobility exercises. Mobility is more so going to get, you know, the hips moving in the right direction, get the arms moving in the right direction. The primers are going to actually be really good for injury prevention and also getting the muscle groups activated beforehand. So Josh loves the band pull aparts, as you can see here. Um, I love doing different things like if you're doing a lower body day, making sure that your hamstrings are primed from doing a couple hamstring curls on a stability ball. You could do some glute bridges to get the glutes primed. The main thing is just to get them activated beforehand, uh, once again, before you jump into it. You know, one of my other favorite things before doing some heavy presses is just some bottoms up kettlebell press, okay? So there's so many different things. You know, if you're doing back, you could grab, set it up right here, and then do some nice little lap pull down before you jump into your heavy back training. There's different things for pressing, for pulling, uh, for lower body. Adding in one to two of these every workout will go such a long way and it's very overlooked. All right, here we go. We're getting into the workout. Let's get to pumping. So first and foremost, start with those compound movements. Start with your strength focused movements. You know, later on we could focus on good bicep curls with slow eccentrics, but for now we're focusing on those power movements where we're utilizing a lot of muscle. So today we've got a push pull going on. So we're gonna start with our bench, then our deadlift. Some people like to deadlift before they bench. That's completely up to, you know, your preference. But for us, we're starting with these big strength-based movements, and we're not leaving these to the end of the workout where we wanna perform with strength, because we'll have pre-fatigue. So this is a great time to really get your compounds in. I like to start the workout with either a squat, a bench, a deadlift, or something like an OHP, a barbell row, anything in that regard. It's gonna go a long way for your strength and your muscularity. So you might be wondering why I'm doing so light. This week is my deload week and in order to just have a perfect workout routine, you know, not necessarily a perfect workout, but here's a little bit of a bonus tip. You really do have to program deload weeks within your training. You know, if you're doing some intense, strong, heavy lifting, you really may need to make sure, you know, every anywhere between four and eight weeks, you're taking one week to pretty much just decrease the load, give your body a bit of a break. It'll allow you to recover, it'll allow you to get stronger. So here I'm using about 70% of my working sets, something that a lot of people overlook and it's important to add in.
Next up, we're going into our kind of weighted hypertrophy block. Although you could argue this is still a compound, I like to kind of limit compound, the umbrella for compound, to barbell work. I'm moving to specific work now. So now I'm gonna get into my chest, then I'm gonna alternate with my back. That way when I have some fatigue in my chest, I go to my back exercise. It's how I personally like to structure it. But we're still doing a strength-based movement. There's a little more control, you know, some unilateral work, meaning I'm working one side at a time. So I like to kind of keep these in my thoughts as I move down my workout. So huge tip for any fly, especially an incline fly. So I'm gonna say people make this, they tuck your head down. When you're tucking your head down, you're removing the ability for you to really squeeze that upper chest. Keeping that head up, you can really bring those elbows together. Imagine you're squeezing these elbows together to really squeeze that upper chest to improve the creasing. So you can see me doing it wrong here, and now my contraction's all weird and I'm getting the lower chest. You can see me doing it correct here, and the difference it makes. What a difference, you can see it. Make sure to use this tip in your workout. And last but not least, you're done your workout, you've put in all the work. It's time to just decompress a little bit. Now this can be kind of up to you how you wanna do it. Some people like to do a couple minute cool down, just walking on a treadmill, let your body relax from everything that took place. I like just doing a bit of static stretching. You know, if you've done some really heavy deadlifts and stuff like that, you may just wanna kinda of hop on a bar, do some nice dead hangs for like 30 seconds, you know, keep that core tight, let your back decompress. You might wanna just do some of these, you know, for your shoulders like that. You know, if you've done some chest work, you might wanna just kind of lean forward and do one of these little, nice little doorway stretches. There's so many different things, you know, we're not gonna show you how to fully stretch, but that's kind of what our full proper workout routine looks like. And definitely, this is obviously long. You know, if you, if you are limited on time, sometimes you might have to take the mobility routine or like the warm up or different things and maybe kind of just make it a little bit shorter if you're, if you're more limited on time. You know, this will take us usually about an hour and a half all in and it kind of works best for us in our schedule. But yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. We appreciate every single one of you. If you're a new subscriber, hit that, um, hit that like button. You know, anyone, every person watching this must hit the like button. Please, it means the world to us. It heck gets us higher up in the algorithm and subscribe if you're new to the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.